Hello, dear authors. I hope you are you are and your loved ones are in uh, good health. Welcome to you be with us. We will start uh, this session phys uh, named the physics uh, with uh, Professor Ahmed Bomzour, uh, professor uh, in uh, at uh, polydisciplinary faculty, and uh, Professor uh, Petrika from the University of uh, Iazi, uh, Romania. So uh, we have the flower, uh, Professor Ahmed Bomzo. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mr. Boutelier. Thank you, Abu Hilal. Uh, welcome, everybody, uh, in this session of uh, physics. And uh, I ask uh, everybody, to, uh, to follow a few guidelines. First, uh, the time allocated for each speech is 15 minutes, including questions. Indeed, you have a maximum of 12 minutes for the presentation and three minutes for questions. Two, please disable your microphones unless you are the presenter and during questions. Three, please don't record the presentation. Five, have fun and enjoy these uh, scientific events. So, uh, Mr. Uh, excuse me. Mr. Abdul Haq Abulward, ID 15. No, c'est pas Mr. Abdul Haq. Excuse me, excuse me, physics. No, uh, Gariba, Gariba Bouza, pardon, Gariba Bouza, ID 128. Yes, I'm here, teacher. Okay, please share your, your desktop and you have uh, uh, 12 minutes to present your works. Okay. You hear me? Yes. Yes. The visualization is clear? Yes. Can I start? Yes, you can start, please. Okay. Thank you. So, hello everybody. I'm Gariba Bouza, PhD student at the Faculty of Science, Mouli Ismail University, Department of Physics. My representation entitled Optimization by the Response Surface Methodology of Turbidity Box Bank and Plane. Our plane starts with an introduction, then materials and method. After that, results and discussion and we will end with a conclusion. Tannin is one of the oldest and the most polluting industries. It transforms animal skins into leather after a preliminary treatment. The tannin industry tops the list of industries that consume large quantities of water. These activities generate significant pollution of wastewater. This work is aimed at the effect of certain factors on the efficiency of the water treatment industry tannery by the methodology of experimental design, the tannery influence on the study were treated by the coagulation flocculation method. According to a previous study, factors such as issued concentration, pH, and type of loculant have significant effects on response, which is turbidity. We choose the box when can planes among the response surface planes because they are more economical and appropriate to our problem. The derivation and exploitation of a second degree theoretical model of the response are presented. The statistical characteristics of the objective function, the graphic methods and the response surface planes will be examined. The aim of this work is to examine the possibility of reducing the pollution of certain hosts from the tannery more turbid by feasible techniques, 
less costly in production and operation and requiring less space. About sampling process and analysis, and, and analysis method, the wastewater comes from an industrial tannery unit located in the city of Mohammedia in Morocco. Sampling is carried out at the level of the effluence of each stage of production and at the level of the main collector where all the discharge from the plants end up. To improve the effectiveness of pollution removal by coagulation flocculation, flocculants are often used. A turbidimeter was used to determine it by tur uh, determine the turbidity according to AFNOR methods, the chemical oxygen demand and the other physicochemical para parameters for the characterization of tannin effluents have been determined. Laboratory skull uh, evolu uh, evaluation of uh, chemical coagulation and flocculation was performed using a six plus jar test apparatus. The factors and the, the response studied are already determined from a screening study, except that this time we will do the optimization by a known response surface plane, which is Book's Benken plane. The response surface plane is a set of experimental design techniques which make it possible to better understand and optimize the study of the response. There are several types of response surface planes. We have focused on box Duncan design. This design fits a complete quadratic model and integrates information from a properly planned factorial experience. For the validation and the optimization of the model, we carried out 15 tests. The Voxbanken plane studied the influence of three factors, X1, X2, X3, on the Y response to be optimized. The response surface materializes the regression surface from a graph in a three-dimensional space. The horizontal plane represents the, the range of the variation of two factors, and the vertical axis indicates the variation of the response from the model. The Pareto diagram allows us to visualize the relative importance of the different factors and their interactions in the form of a classification and a hierarchy. The contribution of the factors are then ordered in ascending order and then represented in the form of a bar diagram associated with accumulative representation. This figure allowed us to note that all the effects of the factors and their interactions are important, which confirms the results already obtained in the screening study. By applying the method of experimental designs, the model sought for the study of response surface is of the second degree. It is represented by the following regression equation. Analysis of variance is undoubtedly the most precise method of statistical analysis used. Its advantage is that, uh, is that it uh, can certainly test the influence of factors on the variations of the objective function, that is turbidity. Its application on our results lead to following table of analysis of variance. This result show the importance of the factors and their interactions this uh, operation has a great interest uh, in so far as uh, it make it, make it, makes it possible to reduce the dimension of the problem, which avoids which avoids to which uh, avoids uh, us to use uh, very expensive sieges, generally dependent on the number of factors. It is clear that most factors and their interactions influence turbidity. The residue analysis is an important step which completes the statistical analysis of the model. The normality of the residual distribution is an essential assumption of the method of least squares. The graphical method used for the 15 tests is a Henry's line presented in this figure.
according to, to this figure, the construction of a Henry's diagram gives the points clothes uh, whose alignment is close to this straight line. The condition of normality of the residual is uh, thus well respected for the, the model. In all of the, of the following figures, the response surface materializes the regression surface from a graph in a three-dimensional space. The horizontal plane of the figure represents the area of variation of two factors, and the vertical axis materializes the variation of the response from the model. Beyond two factors, it is necessary to maintain at a constant level factors whose variations are not described in the horizontal plane. In this figure, figure three, the turbidity according to the pH and the concentration of issues, the maximum turbidity in the tannery waste water will be obtained under the conditions of high pH with minimum issues concentration. In this figure, the turbidity according to flocculant and the concentration of issues, we see that the maximum turbidity in the tannery was to water will be obtained under the conditions of high flocculant and the high concentration of issues. In this third figure, the turbidity finally according to the pH and the flocculant, the maximum of the turbidity in the tannery waste water will be obtained under the conditions of high pH and high flocculant. The construction of the adequacy graph of the model is based on a point cloud which materializes on the axis the variation of the measured response and on the ordinated variation of the response calculated from the obtained model. All the results found reflect the descriptive quality of the model, which seems to translate the measured values of turbidity. The graphical analysis of the results and more precisely the adequacy graph make it possible to observe this good quality. The result obtained by the quadratic model is much more precise than those found previously with the linear model. To conclude, the evolution of waste water pollution is done by determining a certain number of physical chemical parameters characterizing these waters. The measurements of the objective function make, make it possible to specify the visual information on the water. It is defined as the expression of the optical property which causes the dispersion and absorption of light rather than its transmission in a straight line through the sample. Box Benken was used to optimize the turbidity in order to reduce the cost and the number of experiments and improve the process on an industrial scale. Box Benken plane was designed to ensure acceptable and, inform and uniform accuracy of turbidity estimates of uh, uh, estimate uh, over the entire field tests uh, with uh, the smallest uh, number of tests possible. The mathematical model and the statistical analysis confirmed the results concerning the determination of the optimum for better response. The validation of our model was established by the perfect agreement of the theoretical and experimental results. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Ms. Gariba. Gariba Bouza. Yes. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, if you have a question, please, please don't exceed two or three questions. Yeah, please. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Can I uh, ask Gariba uh, or not? Yes, yes, I'm here. Mr. Abdrahim Al Khwit, we can't we can't hear you. Uh, you. You can hear me. Yes. No, you heard me or not? 
Uh, not, not yet. So we have a problem. I don't know. Gariba, do you hear me? Yes, a little. Just a little. Why a little? Okay. I don't know. For me, all it's okay. Do you hear me? If you don't hear me, okay. I cannot uh, ask my questions. You can ask it, Lkhwit. You can ask it, Mr. Lkhwit. Okay. Uh, good. Um, Gariba, what is your background? background. What is your? Background. What? Yeah. What is uh, maybe your bachelor, master? Do you know more about wastewater or not? I'm a PhD student. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know that. But what is your background? Do you have a background in this uh, field or not? Um, and I am understand. I don't understand your question. C'est quoi la formation de base que vous avez? Est-ce que vous avez une formation de base dans les, les OIG ou bien non? Parce que si vous n'avez pas la base, ça ne sert à rien que je vous pose la question. Euh, euh, je maîtrise bien la, la, les méthodologies des plans d'expérience. Mais vous connaissez très bien dans ce domaine ou non? Euh, à l'étel. <laughs> okay, c'est quoi, quoi la relation entre la turbidité? What is the link between uh, turbidity and uh, coagulation flocculation? Uh, we are, uh, you, uh, we, uh, we use the, the, the flocculants. Which one? Which one? Which compound? Uh, Which chemical product do you use? Which which? C'est quoi le c'est quoi le produit chimique que vous avez utilisé? Le produit chimique c'est de le, on a utilisé six six flocculants de de telle façon pour pour obtenir a lot of turbidity. Donc donc vous vous avez de l'eau bien propre et vous voulez créer créer le, la turbidité. Pour l'étudier, c'est ça Non, non, on a pris les eaux usées, c'est pas l'eau propre. Okay, c'est ça, ok, parfait. Donc, et dans ce cas-là, donc, coagulation, co 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 flocculant and the coagulation, yes. it can help you only to precipitate the, the, the coagulant with charges, positive charges. Seulement, yes. les, seulement les trucs qui ont la charge positive, les autres trucs, on ne va pas les faire précipiter. Et d'un coup, donc, ce que vous faites, c'est un petit peu, je ne sais pas. Euh, on a utilisé les, 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 les réponses, chacun, euh, la turbidité tout seul et les, les, les couleurs tout seul. J'ai pris les réponses indifféremment. Écoute, moi, je vous demande de revoir un petit peu la méthodologie que vous avez faite. Parce que la turbidité, c'est quoi ce truc C'est quoi la définition de la turbidité c'est que les, les sels, ok, se relient le pH, parfait, mm -hmm. mais si on prend, si on fait la coagulation, la coagulation et la flocculation, c'est à ce moment-là qu'on va faire précipiter juste les, 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 les ions qui ont une, une charge positive. Ok, mais, okay, les, le, mais, mais tout, ce qui est, tout ce qui est, tout ce qui est, le sable, les, les, les choses-là qui n'ont pas de charge, ils ne oui. vont pas être précipités et d'un coup, ça, ils vont rester ici et d'un coup, ils vont et vont affecter la turbidité. Est-ce que je comprends, est-ce que je peux prendre plusieurs réponses à la fois C'est ce que vous dites Non, parce que les coagulations, flocculations, il ne va pas vous aider trop dans la turbidité. Il ne va pas vous aider trop. Ah, je comprends. D'accord. Oui, donc c'est ça. Parce que, oui, il faut toujours revenir sur la, sur la définition de la turbidité. Parce que la turbidité, il y a quoi on, on va, on va, we can find salts, ok, sand, mud, ok, and we have another problem with bacteria and germs. Ah, uh, ok, ok, je comprends. Ok, oui. but, but, if you oui. add, if you make coagulation, flocculation, only we will precipitate chemical compound, chemical compound with, the, with charge, positive charge, uh, negative charges, negative charges. Why? Because uh, co coagulation, flocculation, the products that we use uh, have a positive charge, like aluminium, like zinc, like. Yes, okay, okay. Okay, je comprends, merci. 
et, 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 et pour moi, si vous me oui. quelque chose comme ça, va, oui. va, va vers les, 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 va vers les, 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 les composés, les composés pharmaceutiques, euh, pharmaceutiques compound. Va vers quelque chose de bien poussé. Si vous faites la PhD, va yes. dans donc quelque chose de bien poussé, comme les produits provenant de, des médicaments. Au lieu d'étudier la turbidité, parce qu'étudier la turbidité, ce n'est pas oui. vraiment grand-chose. Ok, je comprends. Je vous remercie oh. tellement. Et, oui, oui il, faut aller, il faut aller dans les trucs de le, 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 le médicaments, le reste des médicaments, qu'est-ce qu'on va faire avec ça, comment on va les identifier, comment on va les quantifier, comment on va, on va les, 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 les éliminer. Mais étudier, étudier turbidité en ligne, I think it's not a... Un excellent uh, topic. Ok, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Lachwit, for your question. Uh, there is another question, please. Yeah, for me, it's okay. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Lachwit. Uh, there is another question. There is another question. Another question. Gariba. Yes. You are here. Yes. Uh, I have. I have a question. You are. Your model. Your model. Yes. Uh, is uh, the less square method? Uh, can you explain me, uh, please, uh, the slide number number ten? The slide number. Ten. The analysis of variance? Yes. Uh, so uh, the probability we compare it to the probability values can of. You show, uh, can you can you show please your uh, your uh, your uh, your slide? Ah, okay. Uh, the probability values of all factors and uh, their interactions. Can you share? Are, uh, please, can you share your presentation? Ah, ok, ok. Uh, it's clear? Yes. Ok. Uh, the... Where is the variance? What? Where is, where is the variance? Where is the the variance? This is a table of the analysis of variance. Okay. The uh, we we compare the probability values of all factors and their interactions uh, are uh, low uh, than that uh, the the threshold uh, value. It is around the, the zero zero five. Zero zero five. Where is yes. your zero zero five? The value of the significance of all factors and their interactions, we compare it of, uh, uh, we compare it uh, than the the threshold value. Okay, where is your threshold value? The, I don't. It is. It is. It is around the zero uh, zero zero five. Okay. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. You are welcome to chat. Okay. Uh, there is another question, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Miss. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Miss, Miss Gariba Borza. Now we move to a second presentation. Uh, Miss Hajar Kubali. You are here? Miss Hajar Kubali. Okay, 
You can share your presentation, please. Ms. Hajar Kubali. Okay. Ms. Hajar Kubali. Ms. Hajar Kubali, you can hear me? Okay, the third presentation will be presented by Abdul Hamid Boukri. We am here. Yes, I am here. Okay, so you have 12 minutes to present your results and three minutes for questions. Thank you for respecting the time. Thank you. First of all, and before I start, I want to thank the International Conference on Optimization and Applications for presenting this work. My name is Abdelhamid Boukri from Morocco. I am a PhD student at Faculty of Science and Technology, Department of Physics, Laboratory of Materials Physics, University Sultan Mulay Sliman, Beni Millet. In this presentation, I will try to present the main part of my work on the child prediction of magnetocaloric and thermomagnetic properties of amorphous alloy iron 68 chromium 12 silicon H boron 12. First, I will start with an introduction. Then I will talk about magnetocaloric effects and technique for preparing sample. After, I will present the method the simulation method, then I will show the results and discussions, and I finish it with a conclusion. As an introduction, what is an amorphous alloy? An alloy is a solid material whose atomic structure is disordered and obtained when its liquid state is called without crystallization. Metals are among the most difficult to verify materials since they tend to crystallize easily during cooling. Among the applications of amorphous alloy, the, tra the transformators reading ahead. Now we move on general information on magnetocaloric effect. The magnetocaloric effect is defined as the heating or cooling of a magnetic materials due to the application of a magnetic field. This effect occurs in both metallic materials and ceramics. The following figure shows the principle of the magnetocaloric effect. When applying a magnetic field on a magnetic materials, the spins line up and the temperature increases. And when we cancel a magnetic field, the spins get out of order and the temperature drops. One of the most notable examples of the, the magnetocaloric effects is in the chemical elements gadolinium and some of its alloys. The magnetocaloric effect can be quantified with the following equation, as seen in the slide. Elaboration side, the process used for the preparation of amorphous alloy, iron 68 chromium 12 silicon 8 boron 12, is melt spinning technique. This production method consists in ejecting a molten alloy on the surface of a copper wheel rotating at high speed. Under argon pressure, the jet of the liquid alloy forms in contact with the surface a stationary paddle in the form of an elongated drop. The ribbon is formed by solidification of the alloy at the level of this paddle. The jet of the liquid passes through a small circular capillary with a diameter of 0.7 or 0.9 millimeter. The ribbon format is driven by the well, then ejected by centrifugal force, as shown in the figure. Concerning the simulation method, the hypothesis the, to predict 
the thermodynamic, uh, the thermo, uh, thermomagnetic and magnetocaloric properties of our sample, a phenomenological model was used to reproduce the magnetic and magnetocaloric properties. The hypothesis of the proposed model was based on the variation of the magnetization M versus temperature T and the curve temperature Tc given by equation 2, where Tc is the transition temperature, Me is the initial ferromagnetic paramagnetic state value, Mf is the final ferromagnetic paramagnetic state value, A, B, and C are a constant. A is, is given by equation 3, where B is the ferromagnetic state magnetization sensitivity before the transition, and CC, SC, is the magnetization sensitivity at transition temperature. C is given by equation 4. From equation 1 and 2, we can extract expression of variation of magnetic entropy, the maximum of magnetic entropy, and RCP, and calculate the values and the magnetic field variation. By differentiate equation 2, we can obtain the expression of variation of magnetic entropy and at T equal TC, the maximum magnetic entropy change can be expressed as the following expression. Then, for the evaluator of the efficiency of magnetic cooling with its fall wide at half maximum, the RCP is given by the following expression. Then, the change in magnetization of the specific heat is given by the following equation. Now, for experimental result, X-ray diffraction results show that an only broad peak around 20 equal 45 degree without appreciable crystalline peaks can be observed, which amplifies the amorphous st structure of our sample. Magnetic cell, the temperature dependence of magnetization for iron-68 chromium-12 silicon-8 boron-12 alloy was measured as shown in the left part of slide and the transition temperature, Tc, is given, uh, is, given is uh, found to be around 360 Kelvin. In order to deduce the variation of the associated entropy characterizing the magnetocaloric effects of our sample, isothermal magnetization measurements as a function of an external magnetic file up to 5 Tesla were made near to cure temperature. And by using equation one, we obtain the isothermal change of magnetic entropy of our sample as seen in the right part of slide. For theoretical result, the following figure shows magnetization of iron-68 chromium-12 silicon-8 boron-12 under an applied field of 1 tesla and 5 tesla versus temperature. We can observe from figure that the results show a good agreement between modeled results and experimental data for our sample. We see the same thing for the isothermal change of magnetic entropy of an lead field 1 tesla and 5 tesla, and the modeled results show a good agreement with the experimental result. Thereafter, the following figure shows the result for predicted specific heat under 1 and 5 tesla, and it shows a good agreement with experimental result. Table 1 illustrates the parameters determined from experimental data in order to apply this phenomenological model for both fields 1 and 5 tesla. Table 2 present the predicted value, values of maximum of magnetic entropy and FCP and the maximum of specific heat under 1 and 5 tesla. As a conclusion, in this work, the ferromagnetic paramagnetic transition of ion 68 chromium-12 silicon-8 boron-12 
was modeled. The magnetocaloric parameters such as magnetic entropy changes and heat capacity changes versus temperature, and under an applied magnetic field are predicted using the phenomenological model and thermodynamic calculations. The experimental results are in good agreement with the theoretical one. This model can be considered for the development of magnetic refrigeration device and for the assessment of its effectiveness. And thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Bukri. You, thank you. Uh, so, if you have questions, uh, please don't exceed two or three questions. Give you some questions. There is some questions to Mr. Bukri. Uh, Mr. Bukri? Yes, teacher. Ha have you made uh, comparisons with previous works? Yes. I noticed that you have not made comparisons with other works. No. Uh, okay. Okay. There is some questions, please. Thank you, Mr. Bukri. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Now we move uh, to uh, second presentation. Uh, Miss Hajar Kubali, you are here. Miss Hajar Kubali, you are here. No, oh. uh, we move to next, uh, Miss uh, Prof. Uh, Ahmed Bomzo. Okay, okay. After after we call uh, Hajar. Okay, Mr. Butelin. Okay. And uh, the fourth uh, presentation will be presented by uh, Mr. Neda uh, Hissam Mahmoudi Nizhad. You are here, ID 154. I am here. Okay. Doc, you have 12 minutes to present your results, please. Can you share your presentation, please? Mr. Nida? Uh, Miss Nada, uh, I think she uh, responds in the chat. In part chat, she is here. Yeah, yeah you yeah. could share. Yeah, yeah, you could share your uh, screen, please, uh, to yes. begin your presentation. Yeah, sure. Uh, just a minute, please. Ah, um, uh, okay, Miss Nida. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, so now, can you see my uh, presentation? Can you share your presentation, please? Uh, I am sharing, but OK, let me do it again. OK. Um, so now you have it. Can you see my presentation now? Yes. OK. So, is it in the presentation mode, the first slide? You can see the first slide? Yes, yes. Okay. So, um, hello, I'm Neda Hezam Mahmoudinejad from the University of uh, Tudelf in the Netherlands. 
uh, I have a master in uh, photonics and another master in uh, optics that I got from uh, TU Delft as well. And now I'm the third year PhD student there, uh, working in the group of charged particle uh, optics. Uh, first, I would like to thank the organizers of this uh, nice conference and the scientific uh, committee of this conference. And uh, it's my pleasure to present my work here for you and being among uh, you to hear your nice uh, presentations as well. Okay, the subject of my presentation is a local versus global optimization of electron lens system design. Uh, the co-authors of this work are Dr. Mohamed Qafourian Yasser, Dr. Kays Hachen, and Professor Peter Kraut, who are all uh, also from TU Delft. Uh, so maybe I just turn off my camera that I have better connection. Um, so um, actually, um, as uh, okay, what, what, it doesn't work. It just stopped in. Uh, uh, it just stopped. Uh, let me share it again. Sorry, I think it doesn't work. Uh, it's working. Uh, so can you see and hear me? Can you see my slide? Yes, 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 you can go. Yes. yes. Uh, OK, uh, actually, as uh, this presentation is aimed uh, for uh, an optimization conference, there might be some people there who are not expert in the optics or electron optics field. So first, I would like to introduce some concepts of optics that we have in uh, this presentation, like the electron lens system or what do we mean by the optimization of electron lens system design. And then we can go through the answering of the main question of this uh, presentation, which is uh, the optimization of electron lens system design, which either it is a global one or a local one. So let us start with the lens system. What are the lens system? Uh, the lens systems are categorized into two main groups, uh, the optical lenses and the electron lenses. Uh, the optical lenses, uh, who you may have seen them, uh, they are mainly made from glasses uh, and uh, they are used to bend or focus the light beam according to the light optics principle. Uh, the other lenses are the electron lenses, which also categorize into two groups, the electrostatic lenses and the magnetic lenses. Um, the electrostatic lenses that we only consider in our work uh, are uh, the electrodes with electric fields, which are used to control the ion or electron beam based on the principle of the charge uh, particle optics. Uh, so uh, the next uh, uh, optics uh, concept that I would like to explain is that what are the optimization of lenses uh, mean? Uh, to find that, we should first explain the application of the lenses to see what factors make a lens or set of lenses to be defined as a better lens or better set of lenses. Uh, so let's see what is the application of the lenses. Uh, one of the main application of the lenses is to get an image out of the lens system that we call it imaging. Uh, in the ideal situation, we expect to get one point as the image from one single point. However, this is not what happens in reality. In reality, the image of one single point is a spread point instead of a single point like what you can see here. Uh, and um, accordingly, uh, the image that we get from system related to figure B is a blurred one instead of a sharp image that we can see in figure A. Uh, so in optics, this blurring is a known concept which is caused by the so-called aberrations. Uh, therefore, less aberration means better imaging quality and therefore a better optical uh, lens system. Uh, so now uh, we can say that how we can achieve a better optical or electron lens system. Uh, to get a better lens system, the contribution of the aberration should be minimized. But how we can minimize these aberrations can be done by analytical methods, but it is very complicated, especially if many lenses are involved, like our, our uh, case study. But a good alternative is numerical way uh, using the numerical methods, despot size, uh, 
uh, that you already showed, uh, which is a measure for aberration, can be calculated. And the smaller the spot size, the better the lens systems. So now we can define the optimization of lenses and find out what does this mean. Uh, so the optimization of the lenses means minimization of the spot size, or sometimes we call it prop size. And in our uh, work, uh, only the spherical and chromatic aberrations are involved in the aberrations. OK, and now we can defy, uh, define our optimization problem. Uh, the systems that we are considering include six electrodes that you can see schematic of these systems in 3D and 2D here in the figures. And this number of electrodes that are taken uh, just as a choice to have enough complexity for the optics and optimization. Um, but changing this number is straightforward and does not influence the result of our discussion. So based on our previous explanation, objective function would be a function of spherical and chromatic aberrations, which shows by CS and CC stand for spherical and chromatic aberration coefficients. And the three variables of our optimization problem are all lens geometries, uh, such as radii, thicknesses, gaps, and voltages, which are denoted by RI, TI, GI, and VI in the figure. So um, now we are ready to calculate the objective function. Uh, in electron optics, uh, there are some formulas that based on them, the aberration and the spot size can be calculated using the electric potential. Uh, these electric potential are generally calculated by some methods such as finite element method that we call FEM. Uh, these methods mesh the whole space of the lens system to make this calculation. So they are very accurate, but computationally very slow. And this makes some problems, especially when this method is going to be used in a full automated optimization routine to evaluate the objective function for thousands of systems. But there was another method, a so-called SUM method, second order electric method, that proposed in 1989 by Adriansen that we were using. And it can be used to calculate the electric potential by some application. It does not need to mesh the whole space of the lens, and uh, therefore it is very fast. It's not very accurate, but reasonably accurate and very fast to be used inside an optimization routine. So this method enables us to perform a fast and rough optimization for electron lenses and perform some studies like the subject of this presentation. Uh, however, the details of this method, I think, is out of the scope of this presentation. So for those who may have interest in that, I will just um, uh, give uh, these uh, references. If uh, they uh, are interested, they can have a look on these references. Uh, but just briefly, I will show some formulas, the main formulas that are used in uh, this method. Um, yeah, here you can... Uh, see briefly some main formulas that are used in Zoom. Uh, the first formula is related to calculation of the ray radius, and the second and third use the potential along the optical axis and the ray radii to drive CS and CC. Then having CS and CC, spot size, which here denoted by DS, uh, can be calculated. And now uh, the objective function could be calculated, so we are ready to apply the optimization on our problem. The important question is either this optimization of multi-electrode lens system, especially when many free variables are involved, is a global optimization or a local one. To discover this, we implemented GA, genetic algorithm, first as a global optimizer and then FMinCon as a local optimizer. Uh, here, a schematic diagram of the optimization routine is shown. And for the GA, the parameters which has been used here was population of 50, max generation of 100, crossover was crossover arithmetic, uh, sorry, cross, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, arithmetic, and mutation was mutation adapt feasible, and the uh, elitism was taken to be one. And the constraints are also brought into the optimization code as part of the objective function uh, evaluation. Uh, okay, 
And then uh, the constraint implementation. Actually, there were two approaches that we took. We call them approach A and approach B. Um, and yeah, uh, actually the constraint, as explained before, it is to have the image position at a fixed place. So it can have some tolerance and uh, then the condition can be written as XC, which is the image position to be between 3.48 millimeter and 3.52 millimeter. Uh, as I told, the implementation can be in two approaches. The first one, we call it approach A. In this approach, the objective function gets the real calculated value of the spot size when it is in the range. And it gets a value of 100 when it is out of the range. Um, it, in the approach B, objective function is distant dependent, meaning that if it is out of the range, the spot size gets a value which is proportional to the distance that XC has from its aimed value. The format of formulas and the value of 100 are assigned like this to ensure that the non-real value does not go under the possible real values of the spot size for other systems. And now we can uh, compare the two approaches on constraint implementation. Uh, these approaches are implemented, and here you can see the results in the two graphs. The top uh, three graphs are re uh, re uh, related to the approach A, and the bottom three graphs are for the approach uh, B. Uh, in the top graphs, value of 100 are related to the systems which did not satisfy the constraints. In the below graph, values above 50 are related to the systems which were out of the range of constraints. And these values are gradually decreased until GA could find the systems within the range. And as it can be seen in the top graphs, the minimum spot size which optimization reached are higher than the minimum value which has been found by the below graphs. Um, here you can just see the comparison of these two approaches on one graph. And the yellow columns are related to approach A and the blue ones are from approach B. Uh, as it can be seen in a glance from both figures from uh, approach B, could get bit, uh, much better results. Uh, and the minimum objective function reached by approach B, which is shown by blue, has in general lower values compared to the ones from approach A that is shown by yellow. Uh, as you can see, uh, for some runs, GR could even not find a system which satisfies the constraint with an evaluation of that 5000 system, for example, in the first and seventh column. So in total, it is clear from figure uh, that approach B could on average find a much better system. Uh, it can be also concluded that using a value depending on the distance from the border of the constraint, like approach B, helps the optimization to get better results. Uh, therefore, approach B is taken as the constraint implementation approach for our uh, problem. And uh, now by selecting the constraint implementation method, we can apply it in GA and yes, in FMINCON. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. Please go to the conclusion, the timeout. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, just here, uh, it's a quick uh, on uh, the results of optimization by uh, GA. And then we feed actually the uh, initial the points that I that we got from GA to FMIN Khan. And uh, you can see that uh, the results from FMIN Khan could not reach the one that GA could reach. Uh, so uh, the conclusion and plans, actually, it can be the optimization of multi-electrode lens design has many local minima. Uh, also, we got uh, the point that a local optimizer cannot be sufficient to find a satisfactory result for the problem and implementing a global optimizer is therefore needed. Uh, GA could perform well by overcoming many local minima and improving their results significantly for such lens optimization problem. And our plans uh, regarding this work can be to use local optimization in combination with GA to properly use the combination of uh, these two and find out the, pos the best possible combination of these, uh, two, combina uh, these two optimization. Um, so that was the end of my presentation and thanks for your time and attention. And if you have any question, I, uh, it would be my pleasure to answer. 
Thank you, uh, Miss Rida. And excuse me, and excuse me, excuse me, uh, Miss. At the beginning, I made a mistake. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, if you have questions, please you don't act, act, exceed two or three questions. If you have questions, Uh, Miss Rida, what yes. what are the applications of your system? Uh, actually, uh, my work is uh, uh, has uh, a lot of application on the electron um, design field. Uh, so, for for example, for the electron optical designer, it was always a question whether this optimization of the multi electrode lens system are, for example, a local one or a global one or they, uh, if they can do it in an automated way. Uh, so now with uh, this study, we could uh, answer them that, uh, yes, it is actually a global optimization. So they cannot, for example, use the local optimization method. Um, so for optical, uh, electron optical designers, uh, this is the application and uh, this is the, the study that I think they were looking for. <laughs> so they can just have a look at uh, this uh, study. Uh, uh, okay. If you have questions. So, thank you, Miss uh, Miss uh, Neda. My pleasure. Thank you thank also you. for all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. My pleasure. Okay. Uh, Miss uh, Hajar Kubali, you are here. Yes, sir, I can hear you. Can okay. You hear me? Okay. Okay. So you have 12 minutes uh, to present your results. Okay, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, you can see my presentation. Yes. yes. Okay, perfect. Hello, everyone. Hope that you and your families are well and staying safe. I'll be presenting you a part of our work at the Laboratory of Bioprocess and Biointerfaces at the University of Science and Techniques of Nimeland. The present work was supervised by Professor Mustafa Lwelli and Professor Hassan Latrash and entitled The Application of Theoretical Prediction to Prevent the Bacterial Contamination of Medical Materials. The plan of our work will be as follows. We'll start with an introduction, then presenting the experimental section, the results and discussion, and finally, a conclusion. Nosocomial infection, or also called hospital-acquired or health-associated infections, are those infections that patients acquire while receiving a health care. They are considered a serious public health issue that affects hundreds of millions of people every year all over the world. Predisposing factors of, of nosocomial infections are the invasive, invasive procedures, long hospital stay, excessive uh, antibiotics usage, and the existence of several illness. The most commonly isolated nosocomial pathogenesis are, first of all, E. coli with 26%. It is the most the main cause of wound infections, pneumonia, and meningitis in neonates. The second one, Staphylococcus aureus, with 60%. It is the primary cause of lower respiratory tract infections and the second leading cause of nosocomial pneumonia and cardiovascular infections. The third one is Pseudomonas aeruginosa, aeruginosa with 8.5%. It colonizes the respiratory and the gastrointestinal tracts of dehospitalized patients. Infections resulting from a biofilm are resistant to antibiotic treatments and therefore pose a public health problem. Biofilm is an assemblance of microbial cells 
that is irreversibly associated with a surface and a closed in a matrix of primary polysaccharidic material. The microbial adhesion is influenced by the physical chemical characteristic of the cell surface, hydrophobicity and charge, and also determined by the environmental conditions and surface properties like surface tension, ionic strength, charge, and the degree of hydrophobicity. The basic of adhesion, according to the thermodynamic uh, theory, is the interactions between the atoms and the molecule. At the molecule level, the adhesion is ensured through the van der Waals interactions, consisting in essentially of dispersive interactions and to acid-base interaction, electrostatic forces, hydrogen bonds, and hydropho the hydrophobicity of the surfaces. The goal of our study is to evaluate the risk of contamination of medical surfaces by pathogenic strains in, strains in order to prevent the con bio-contamination of medical materials, minimize, minimize the nosocomial infection, and finally to optimize the choice and the apt material and treatment. In order to achieve our goal, a theoretical estimation of the ability of four strains in the medical field, Staphylococcus aureus, Ishi e. coli, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and Salmonella to adhere to four different substrata that are commonly used in the medical field, that are glass, polystyrene, polyethylene, and stainless steel was studied and we chose to study uh, and we used the thermodynamic approach. Moreover, the studied support would, were treated with surfactants. Surfactants are surface active surface substances with hydrophilic parts combined with a hydrophobic part that are capable of the spontaneous organization on surfaces, generating changes in the nature of solid liquid interfaces. The, absorp the absorption of surfactants uh, on a surface, like glass polystyrene, modifies the hydrophobicity inter interfering with the microbial adhesion and the desorption process. In the Miss uh, Miss Kubali, we can we can't hear you. I think you have a technical problem, Miss Kubali. We can't hear you. Experimental section divides into two parts. The first one, physical chemical characterization. The components of the surface of the materials and the bacteria were determined by performing a contact angle measurement using three probe liquids, one polar, non-polar and two polar. The second one par, uh, part is the theoretical prediction of adhesion. By calculating the interaction energy between the bacteria and the substrate and considering the Lichwitz van der Waals interaction, electric static interaction and hydrophilic hydrophobic interaction the physical chemical characterization of the four studied strains was determined as follows the cells were incubated overnight at 27 degree in lubria bertani medium then harvested by centrifugation and then the suspension is poured on a cellulose acetate membrane filled with uh, filtered using the negative pressure. The contact angle uh, angles was me were measured with a goniomert using three solvents. 
one non-polar geodomethan and two polar formamide and water. The contact anger angles were measured six times with separate culture. As for the, surf, the, three, the four materials, the clean support, glass, polyethylene, polystyrene, and the stainless steel, they were soaked into a, pet, a petri dish containing one of the three surfactants for three hours at 25 degrees. After the contact time, the physical chemical properties were determined using the contact angle measurement. The components of the surface energy were determined uh, by employing Young's equation. And the surface hydrophobicity was evaluated through contact angle measurements and by the approach of Van Oss. In this section, we are pre will be present. We are we are going to present now the physical chemical characterization of the four studied strains. In this table, the first call the three first columns present the contact angle measurements result of deodometan, formamide, and then water. The fourth one present the the van der Waals component. The fifth and the sixth one present the acid base interaction. As for the last one, uh, it presents the free energy of interaction delta GIWI. According to the results, the, electrode, uh, the electron donor component was higher than the electron acceptor uh, character for all the four studied uh, strains. As for the, the the, the hydrophobicity, they were a very large, they showed a variation in their uh, in their results. Since Staphylococcus aureus and Pseudomonas aeruginosa and Salmonella, they were are considered hydrophilic since their delta GIWI is positive. As for E. coli, delta GIWI is negative, which means that the cell surface This, this diaporama, we are going to present the physical chemical results of the treated and untreated uh, materials. The first graph presents the electron donor and acceptor character of the, the four materials, and the second one presents the, the free energy of interactions of the surface materials. Considering the results, it appears that the four supports Ms. are in Ms. Ms. Considered hydrophobic. Miss Kubeli? Uh, polystyrene Ms. is. Miss Kubeli, you hear me? By inox, stainless, or stainless steel. And finally, polystyrene. The glass surface is highly electron donor and weakly Ms. electron donor, contrary to the other supports. Miss Kubeli? Twin 20. Please, Miss Kubeli, you have exceeded the time allocated to you. Miss Kubeli? Yes, sir. Uh, please, you, you you have exceeded the time allocated to you. Okay, sir. We will have, uh, have some questions if we can. You can continue, please. You can continue. Can you see the uh, the presentation? Ms. Kubeli, you can continue, please. Can, can you see the presentation? N no. Okay, now I share the presentation. You can, okay. Can you see? No, not yet. Please share your presentation, please. I'm sharing it right now. 
Can you see the presentation? Not yet. Okay, I... Uh, can you see it right now? Not yet. Oh the characterization of the two involved matrices. The total free energy of interaction between the microorganism and the surface was evaluated. The results are presented in the figures. The figure number A presents the total free energy of interaction between the cells and glass, B between the cells and polyethylene, C between the cells and polystyrene, and finally D between the cells and the stainless steel. The attachment of cell on the glass surface was unfavorable. Ms. Kubeli, Ms. Kubeli? Or if you can go to the conclusion, please. Okay. To conclude, the Thank bacterial contaminations of biomaterial surfaces can lead to serious, to serious problem, problems in the medical field, which is why a prediction of the adhesion of pathogenic strains on different surfaces treated with surfactants was proposed. Considering the result, glass is a highly recommended material. As for the surfactants, it is suggested to use preferably 2020 or sodium lauryl sulfate. The obtained result showed also that the surface biocontamination is related to the physical chemical properties of both the bacteria and the material. These findings can be applied for a better optimization in the choice of medical material and also the appropriate treatment of the Thank you, Ms. Hajar. Thank you. Uh, if you have questions, there is a question. There is a... Yes, Mr. Lachwit. Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, yes. Hajar, do you hear me? Hajar, do you hear me? Yes, I can hear. Yes, you can hear you. Okay, yes, you can hear you. At some point, some uh, point you um, um, tell us that, uh, that to make estimation, estimation of the risk. But, uh, but uh, I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't see where do you make estimation, estimation of the risk. Actually, you can't estimate the risk of a contamination by a bacteria. It's something very difficult. But we are predicting the addition of the, the bacteria on different materials that are used in the medical field. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. So, 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 you, you, so, you only characterization of physical, uh, physical chemical of uh, materials. Yes. No, of the material and actually the bacteria. Yeah. And yeah. Do you know and how? Do you know how do you can can estimate the risk? Uh, actually, we are now proposing a very quick uh, method in order to estimate the risk. It is a very quick, but if you want to, to estimate the risk, it will take a very long step in order to isolate the bacteria, uh, the cause of in, the infection, and uh, also to choose the right material. But now we are just proposing a better and optimal, and actually the, the main problem is to find a quick solution. In no, order no, to no, 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 so, so uh, they, uh, they uh, tell you that, tell that should, uh, should, uh, should, uh, should, uh, should be treated. treated. How? How? And which compound, and which compound that will use, use to treat your surface? Treat your surface? Oh, professor, oh, professor, oh, professor, oh, yes, the treatment of the surfaces yes. is... Yes. yes. I will disable, I will disable the one and activate. And activate.
Uh, okay, according uh, the question was uh, the treatment of the surfaces, right? So yeah, yeah. the treatment of the surfaces in our case was uh, was made in order to choose the right and the apt uh, detergent. Okay, that's why we we used uh, detergents that which, are which, commonly which, used. Which, 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 uh, which, detergent? which detergent? Because actually, because the surfactants are detergent. They are yeah, because, yeah, because, because, because you will create, 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 create I'm sorry, yeah, I can't yeah, hear another. Yes, I will create what? Mr. 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 Create another another problem. Please take off your uh, your Sir, phone. we cannot unuse the detergents. That's something impossible. You have to use, especially in the medical field. They are used and they are legal detergents that are used. So if they are legal, which means they are test, they have been tested and approved. So I use the, the commonly used detergent like sodium lauryl sulfate. It is the commonly used and the highly uh, sell uh, detergent in the whole world. Do you, do you, do you, do you I'm sorry, sir, I really can't hear you. Yes. That yes. Can, can, uh, uh, they, they obstacle Okay, now we're talking about a medical hospital in the in the room uh, in the room for a surgery. We can't yeah, find. This. Yeah. Okay. Now I am I'm speaking about a surgery room. If you, uh, you uh, the bacteria, the four bacteria that I used in the study are commonly uh, isolated in the medical field, so you can find them actually in other uh, in other fields like uh, food industry but they are not the same especially is sa sa uh, salmonella but you can find other bacteria i mean we studied other bacteria in medic in the food industry but now we are focused only on the house in the medical field okay thank you okay, thank you you're welcome sir hey, hey. Uh, I have uh, a I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, Kubali. Uh, Kubali. Yes, sir. Miss Kubali. Miss Kubali. Uh, your presentation, presentation and uh, global uh, global uh, prediction. Uh, prediction. Uh, no. Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, sir, Kubali. No. Kubali. No. Uh, of theoretical of theoretical prediction. Prediction. Yes. prediction yes. The, the, the computation of music of material. Material. Yes. But uh, but. Uh, uh, I didn't. Mm. I didn't. Mm. Mm. Oh, theoretical, theoretical, theoretical theoretical presentation. presentation. What model have you, model have you adopted? adopted? Uh, we used the Van Os model, and we uh, and uh, com combined with the Young equation, and uh, for the thermodyn and used the thermodynamic approach. Okay. Okay. Uh, actually, the contact angle me measurements give you an idea about the uh, about the surface of the uh, either the bacteria or the support. They give you an idea about the hydrophobicity, the charge of the bacteria, and the water contact angle measurement. When uh, you combine the 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 results, these results of uh, the bacteria and the, also the material, you can conclude using the young thermodynamic approach, the ability of the attachment, if it is favorable or unfavorable. Oh. Oh. Can you hear me? I'm sorry. Should I repeat? Yes, yes. yes. OK. Yes. OK. Thank you, Miss Thank you, Miss You're welcome, sir. OK, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, uh, the fifth presentation 
will be presented by Hanan Yagubi. Uh, are you here? Yes, Professor, I'm here. Okay, so you have 12 minutes to present your results, please. Okay. Thank you. Uh, did you see the presentation, please? It's okay? Yes, it's okay. You can go. Okay, thank you. So, uh, hello everybody. So today I will present you uh, our work about mathematical study on the relation of energy density and other parameters in selective laser centering process of polyamide 12 and their influences on quality of the final produced parts. And here we talk about the most recent processes of selective uh, of additive manufacturing, which uh, use the polyamide powder to produce a three-dimensional part. So I'm Hanan Yagubi, PhD student in Laboratory of Applied Mechanics and Technology in Enset uh, Rabat in uh, Mohammed V University. So in uh, our presentation, I will follow this plan. Did you see the plan? So I will start by an introduction and research objective. Then I will talk about problem description and formulation. And after this, I will show you the direct relationships for energy density calculation. And then I show you the effect of other parameters on energy density. Uh, after this, I will present you the establishment of mathematical equations for the calculation of energy density as a function of other mechanical properties. And finally, I will finish by the conclusion. So first of all, the definition of additive manufacturing according to standard AFNOR is the set of processes allowing to manufacture layer by layer by addition of material physical object from a digital object. So selective laser centering, uh, this technology is among seven technologies of additive manufacturing. It was developed in 1980 at University of Texas in the USA. The materials used are the polymers nylon and nylon. Uh, the materials uh, is in uh, are in powder form and for the melted powder becomes supporting material. So what is the operation of selective laser centering is, of course, manufacturing technique made with plastic or elastomer powders. And we use the five tape uh, produced by three dimensional uh, modelization software uh, for building the component layer by layer until the part is complete. Uh, using CO2 laser beam, which melts the polyamide powder by tracing the actual cross section line after line with using scanner stamp, as you see in the figure. And uh, then the powder is fast to solidify, and then the finished product is allowed to cool for 12 to 24 hours, then it is extracted from the powder. So uh, using this process make us able to produce functional polymer products at full density, which is eco-friendly, and we have high build rate, and we don't need any support structure. We can produce accurate and durable plastic parts, and we have wide range of materials available with excellent mechanical properties for functional parts application. So this technology is very recognized technologies and uh, well established, uh, especially in the industrial sector, uh, such as uh, for development of prototyping and uh, manufacturing of cars, houses, etc. And we found this technology in the arts fields, entertainment, medical, food, etc. So the major problem uh, of the quality of the part in uh, selective laser centering is the appearance of delimination and volumetric deformation, as you see in the figure one, such as the curling uh, and lateral growth. So the definition of this residual stress uh, are the constraints without external force application. There are two types, compression type and traction type, such as deformation and cracking, and their origins uh, are the thermal gradient. So in the bibliography, we have found three relation, different, three different relations uh, that uh, use it to calculate uh, the value of the energy density. 
The first relation is uh, ED is the energy, ED is the energy density, P is the laser of the power, V is, is the scan speed, and uh, H is the hatch distance. T is the layer thickness. But in the second relation, we found just the uh, P is the laser of the power and uh, the scan speed and uh, the hatch distance. In the third relation, we found uh, the laser of the power, the scan speed, and D, the laser spots diameters. And figure two uh, shows the comparison of processing parameters for the production of the parts. And we can see that the variation of the parameters uh, can affect directly the quality of the final part. So here, uh, as the first uh, case of study of the work of the, we have found the work of Franco in 2010, the table one showed the variation of the energy density with other parameters. In this part, we will transform the measured values in the table into curves to show the variation of the energy density with the other parameters. And that was not done by uh, Franco in 2010. So as the result, figure three shows the variation of the energy density depending with temperature and shows that the energy density is rapidly increased in uh, 180 uh, and the energy specific equal to two. Uh, uh, pardon, parce que je ne vois pas les deux complets. OK, this figure three shows that the energy density is rapidly increased at uh, 180 degrees Celsius and uh, the energy uh, specific equal to 200 joule or meter. So uh, in figure uh, four, we see the variation of the energy density depending with laser power and figure four shows that the energy density uh, is rapidly increases to 50 watts and the energy specific equal uh, to 200 uh, joule on meter. So in the second case study, this work is uh, from uh, Tronco in 2016. So uh, the table two shows the parameters values of breathing of the parts have been shown it, and we have added the values calculated by two relations, equation one and two of the energy density. And as the result, uh, the figure five uh, shows uh, the trend in uh, energy density and power of the laser and touch space. And figure six shows the comparison between uh, two relationship uh, of uh, two relation uh, of the calculation of the energy density. So our work focuses on uh, finding the relationship between the energy density and other parameters by establishing of mathematical equation uh, using uh, MATLAB software and using uh, the correlation uh, method. Uh, we have explored the experimental work of other authors, uh, as you see in figure seven, uh, shows the effects of energy density on the relative density of the SLS uh, spacement made from uh, polyamic 12. Uh, and this work is uh, from Yen in 2011. And we have choice uh, two methods, linear model and uh, general model got. Uh, then, uh, also in the figure eight, uh, we have found the, the experimental results from Cold Fight 26. Uh, the figure shows the effect of laser power on uh, elongation at break in mining 12. And we have obtained the equation between uh, these two parameters by uh, correlation method. We have used linear, linear model and uh, we have used linear model and we take on consideration the two orientation of uh, the parts, the orientation zero degree and the orientation uh, uh, 90 degree. Uh, also, in figure nine, uh, shows the young models values of the test spacement. Uh, and this work is uh, from Colfade in 27. 
and we have good same thing. We have obtained the, the equation uh, that uh, relation these uh, two parameters. Uh, so here uh, we have found other works of uh, Cook in 2015. Uh, the figure 11 shows the comprehensive strain strength response of energy density, and uh, the figure 12 uh, shows the relationship between energy density and flow stress. And we have uh, it, uh, used uh, two method linear model and general model. And we have found uh, similar results approximately. So as a conclusion, we can say that the mathematical equation obtained in this study allows us to add them to our mathematical thermomechanical uh, model in the next work. And however, this work is done to calculate the value of the energy density as function with other uh, mechanical uh, parameters. And we can consider these uh, parameters as k of uh, the, k, the k parameters of this process. And uh, it also facilitates the optimization of the processes for the users of this technology and the manufacturers of materials. So the correlation method is the most relevant method for exploiting the experimental data from previous work, which describe uh, this system. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, Ms. Hanan. You are welcome. OK, uh, if you have questions, please, there is a question. Okay, there is a question. So, okay. Uh, thank you, Ms. Hanan. You are welcome, sir. Thank okay, you. thank you. Thank you. Uh, and the final presentation. Uh, that will be presented by uh, Zakaria Matalla, ID 159. Hello to everyone. Yes, I hear you. Okay, I will present my, my share. My... Matalla, you are here? Yes, I'm here. Yes, I'm here. I'm oh. hearing you. Okay. Give me a second. Please share your presentation, yes. please. Okay. You are seeing it? Uh, not yet. Okay. Now you see, you see my presentation? Not yet. Okay. And now? Uh, it's, no, not yet. Okay. I will repeat this. Excuse me. I'll repeat. It's. Okay. Give me a second, please. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, I will repeat. Okay. You are seeing now my presentation? Yeah, okay, it's okay. Okay, a minute, and then now? Okay. It's okay? Uh, it's okay, you can go. Okay. Okay. So, hello to everyone. Uh, I wish uh, that you are and your family in uh, good health and safe during this spreading of the coronavirus and this quarantine that we are living with it at this moment. First, let me pre introduce myself. My name is Zakaria Matla. I'm an energy engineer and PhD student from the University of Science and Technology of Benimle. And as you can see, the topic that I'm going to share with you is about talking about the numerical simulation of micro heat pipe design optimization. So, in order to present this work logically, my outline will be structured in this manner. Starting with the motivation behind this work, 
then we we pass through uh, the uh, heat pipe family and their applications to give you a little bit an overview uh, and a better understanding on the, uh, of this field. After we will uh, we'll attack micro heat pipe system, which is the system that we are dealing with it with this in this presentation. After we, uh, we will investigate the numerical techniques that uh, we used to solve this problem, and finally we will end with the conclusion and give you some perspectives of this work. Okay. In the recent years, the electrical equipment are becoming smaller and fast, large quantity of heat. So there, there was been a lot of recent emphasis on heat dissipation. Micro heat pipe is being looked as one of the emerging technologies in thermal call, thermal calling devices and has a set of features which can we uh, classify them as follows. Micro heat pipes are, they are so quiet, so no sound is going out from them when they work. Uh, it's a, uh, they are passive devices, so not required to any external for, uh, source power other than the heat source itself that we want to dissipate to make the micro heat pipe operate. And relatively small in size, making it desirable components for calling smaller. Our study is focusing on how to predict some of the important characteristics of the micro heat pipe using a numerical, new mathematical formulation, which is based on the conservation laws of physics and approximation of the interface liquid vapor as a conical thrust area. Okay, here I'm giving you some uh, applications of the heat pipes. Uh, we can see that we have, for, for example, thermal management of electronic by capillary heat pipe, which we can use them for uh, dissipating heat from the processor for the uh, laptops or phones. We can see all the satellites, solar arrays, which we can use, spe uh, especially the loop heat pipe kind of uh, the heat pipes to uh, dissipate heat from the uh, solar, solar arrays. And also we have thermal control of power electronics by two-phase loop using capillary pumped loop. <clears throat> okay, we have also a uh, thermal siphon that we can use, can use them for solar collectors with two-phase. Also we have uh, flat heat pipes that we can use them to dissipate heat from field. And also in a cold climate, heat pipes could bring heat uh, fr from the torso to the end or toes, ears, etc. to prevent frostbit phenomena that you can see here in the figure at the bar. Okay, uh, we will go now to the heat pipe family. So heat pipe is the uh, principles of both the thermal conductivity and phase change to effectively transfer heat from one body to another one. As you can see in the figure one, the heat pipe is, uh, has the shape of the cylindrical shape, and we can divide it into three sections, condenser, adiabatic section, and, and evaporator. So at first, uh, heat is, apply, uh, is applied to the evaporator, then the uh, liquid at the evaporator section will start to uh, evaporate. This vapor will flow naturally by pressure difference between the hot and cold, sec cold uh, section, which they are uh, evaporator and condenser section. So uh, when the vapor section will, uh, will uh, remove this heat and uh, transform to the uh, liquid phase, so this liquid will uh, return back to the evaporator by cap capillary pump, such as for, uh, structures such as, for example, the weak structures. Thermosiphon is another kind of heat pipe that has the principle of the heat pipe that were discussed before, but we have here two differences. The first one is that liquid is returning by gravity, so there is no need to any capillary structure. And also uh, at the evaporation, we have two processes, which is evaporation and boiling process. Another two kinds are loop heat pipe and capillary pumped loop. They are too similar to each other. Just for the capillary pumped loop, there is no connection between reservoir and evaporator, which makes it suffering during the transit startup. Whereas the uh, loop heat pipe starts in a simple manner because liquid is guaranteed to 
will be in the evaporator due to the fact that the uh, low pit pipe uh, there is a, a direct connection between the uh, reservoir and the evaporator as you can see in the figure so uh, which makes the low pit pipe more available viable uh, option for the space application where well, remote okay now we go to for the microheat pipe system. Okay, microheat pipe system is a non-circular channel having sharp edges, which is something so important, which they uh, act as, as the weak to create to create a sufficient capillary pressure gradient to ensure that liquid will return and reach the evaporator section. So here I'm giving you an uh, animation of the working principle of the microheat pipe, which is similar to a uh, heat pipe that we discussed before. After her interface of liquid vapor phase, liquid film thick, uh, thickness, and we have three uh, uh, sections, evaporator, adiabatic, and condenser section. But first, the, the heat is applied to the evaporator section. The vapor will be created at the evaporator, so this vapor will uh, uh, go through uh, by the condenser by uh, pressure difference due to the cold and hot source. Uh, this heat will remove to the surrounding and the liquid will return back to the evaporator by uh, uh, surface tension and curvature of the interface liquid vapor phase. Okay, here I'm giving you some hypotheses of this uh, study. So, Surface tension is a constant along the axial direction because we are dealing with the uh, phase change, so there is no uh, big deal, a big uh, difference in temperature between the uh, liquid and the vapor phase. And thus, out and thus, any lateral flow of the liquid and vapor phase are neglected. The applied heat flux at the solid wall is uniformly distributed among all the corners. The effect of gravity is neglected for the horizontally posed microheat pipe. Capillary limits dominate over other operating limits like boiler limits and govern the maximum capacity rate. Okay, here I'm giving you some system of uh, our system of equation that we uh, are proposing. Continuity equation we have here the for the liquid and the same equation is for the we can get it for the vapor phase. For the, for the liquid and vapor phase. We have film thickness, which we can derive it from the uh, young laplace equation and uh, using the PC, which is the capillary pressure, and K is the curvature of the interface liquid vapor. PD is the, uh, the joining pressure. So at the end, we will uh, assemble the final equation of the thin liquid film thickness with a third order nonlinear differential equation. Okay, now we go to the numerical investigation. So I'm, I'm giving you here some uh, uh, important dimensions here. So the container material and fluid are copper and water. Thermal property of the water, the water we can get them get them from the RefPro 0.9 software that we can uh, make it as a function in a in a, in a MATLAB, uh, and we can call it at any moment we want to get the, any property. Uh, step size is about 10 to the minus fourth to ensure that the we have no divergence of the calculation and we have your other uh, parameters. Okay. Due to the fact that the film thickness equation is uh, or the equation, we can derive from a three equation of first order and couple them with the continuity and momentum equation to end up with seven equation, first order non-linear differential equation, which can be solved simultaneously using Runge Kota for further technique. The conventional method for selecting these boundary values are not known and depends on the experience. In this presentation, the bound, this boundary value are basically those presented in this, in this reference that you are seeing at the, uh, below of the slide. Using Runge Kita fourth order technique, which is a, a, an 
IB with any problem technique and by applying the initial conditions, we get our first results by guessing the value of the slope, thickness uh, slope at x equal to zero. We check if the velocity at x equal to at z equal to L equal to zero, which is our boundary conditions here. Uh, we, if not, we, uh, we check if the velocity, uh, we calculate a new slope using second method, we still making this process until we reach our goal, which is the velocities at x equal to L are equal to zero. This, this technique is named as the shooting. Okay, we get the results that, uh, that we, I'm showing to you here using MATLAB uh, 2017. So for the first figure, the higher the input thermal load, the lower the film thickness flow rate increases as input thermal load increases, resulting in a physical reasonable trend, which we can verify with the, uh, the reference that I'm giving you before. Figure two and three, more the heat input thermal load is applied to the evaporator, more heat transfer coefficient and average heat transfer because the film thickness resistance becomes smaller and smaller. So as you can see that the increase of the input thermal load affects positively thermal performance of the microheat pipe, but supply of the heat is limited by uh, boiling limits, which can be interpreted as follows. In the case of the uh, temperature, bubbles can be ungenerated. They collapse together and form a vapor film over the wall. This vapor layer stops the liquid to reach the evaporator section and the result on the, on the burning or out of the microheat pipe as the temperature of the water increases. Okay. So we have presented here a new mathematical formulation to enhance the heat transfer capacity of the microheat pipe by varying the input thermal load. Which the, which 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 affects thermal load on the heat transfer capacity. This model was uh, evaluated to be a useful tool for performance uh, prediction of the microwave pipe design. More studies are needed to be executed you know, on this field area, like uh, coming up with the uh, 2D and 3D uh, NCD problem to discover more secrets about this uh, device. And also optimizing, for example, uh, this device by using uh, opt optimize, optimizing function, for example, to optimize the hydraulic radius or the, sh uh, the shape of uh, the corners of the microwave pipe. So this is it. Thank you for your listening and attention. If there is any question, please let me know. It will be a pleasure to answer. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Zakaria Matallah. Uh, now, uh, if you have questions uh, for Zakaria, there is a questions for Zakaria. Okay, uh, Zakaria, you you have uh, you 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 have uh, used the fourth order of uh, range kita method, okay? Yes. For your simulation, uh, what is the order of the error? The order of five. The truncature error is the order of uh, five. Five. They don't get for further thickening. Yes. <clears throat> so, uh, like for example, uh, we have the mid, for example, it's a first uh, truncation error is the you have calculated in a first order. We have what? We have calculated. You have calculated what? The error. Uh, no. No, because the method is very accurate, 
but because the problem at first is that when you try to make the calculation, the uh, the calculations start diverge because uh, you have the step size, maybe it's not uh, more accurate or more small, so you can get the errors. But at the end, when you see all the parameters in a good way, so you will get the uh, solution of the, uh, the the curves that I'm showing you. So you can end up that the uh, the results are good enough to be presented. Okay, but you should calculate it. <clears throat> And you have, I, mean, I have a question here. How can I calculate the error? Because I don't know the the, the analytical solution. To make an error, you need an analytical solution, which is, is the real, uh, real uh, results. And we can compare our approximation results with this uh, analytical solution. Ah, OK. But, but we have I, no, yeah, because as you okay. can see, that the equations that okay. we have are nonlinear okay. differential equations that you can that are different. Okay. Okay, Difficult Mr. To, uh, Mr. Zakaria. Uh, okay, 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 Mr. Okay. Zakaria. Okay, I understand. And uh, do you and do you have an idea about the computation time? The computation time. Yes. Yes, it, it takes time, but not, not uh, too much because uh, our system is not uh, at this uh, complicated uh, because. Because we are dealing with the one one dimensional problem, so and mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of uh, the hypothesis, hypothesis. So uh, we see solution in a I don't know in a uh, half minute, like that, like that, using MATLAB software. Okay, but thank if you. we go further to the more uh, uh, for two D or three D problem, and we get also the density problem. We'll use a lot of time to calculate and to make a computation of this. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you, Zakaria. Welcome, sir. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. My pleasure. Uh, there is a question. Thank you. Okay, to conclude, I would like to thank you, uh, thank you all. Uh, and uh, I hope you and your loved ones are in good health. Thank you and uh, goodbye. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. Thank you. goodbye. Thank you for all uh, participants. Mr. Abu Hilal, please stop the recording. Yeah, it's okay. And please demand for for participants to join the closing ceremony uh, oui. to close this event and to announce uh, the best paper sessions. Okay.